Hi, I'm Dr Neil Cox from the University of Reading and this is the first in a series of talks about poetry, uh, specifically poems from the Forward Anthology. Part of my job um, at the university is to go to schools and colleges and talk with students about um, texts they're reading. And one of the most frequent requests I get is to visit a school to talk about Dowagit Nagra's Look We Have Coming to Dover. And I think it's quite, it's quite easy to see, to see why. It's a poem that's about very pressing contemporary issues. It's about immigration, it's about race and racism. And the recent history uh, recent social history in the, in the UK, but it's also a poem with extraordinarily lively and inventive language, and that kind of combination of um, this kind of really kind of vibrant, engaged, innovative use of language, and um, a certain kind of uh, political kind of awareness. It's a bit of a winner, really. The students I taught to always say really, really interesting um, things about the poem, but there's some things uh, that I always kind of question about certain readings, and to kind of work this through a little bit, I'm going to begin by talking about the title of the poem, Look we have coming to Dover, exclamation mark. And the poem, um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put the poem down the bottom of this uh, video so you, can, so you can have a look at it. Um, when I talk to students about this, they, they tend to say something like, Look we have coming to Dover is a kind of a mangled English, the, the syntax is kind of all over the place and quite often what is said is that this is representative of um, the English language used by people unfamiliar with speaking English because um, recently arriving in, in Britain um, and I, I think that that's there's at least something to think about and, and question here the first thing is I mean if you talk to my colleagues in linguistics in, in the University of Reading, they'll point out that there's something really problematic about a deficit model of language. In other words, the idea that there is a kind of a dominant form of a given language, and then there are these kind of derivatives that, that lack something or, or are problematic in some way, is, is difficult to sustain. One of the reasons for this, I mean, you could just look at, um, for example, if you look at the royal family, hear a recording of them when they were in, in like the 1930s, they sound completely different to they do now. You know, like the Queen's English itself has a history, it, it transforms its subject to change. Of course, the whole English language is a constantly, um, it's in a constant uh, state of development change and, and transformation. It's a thing of flux. And one of the great engines of linguistic change is uh, it meeting, the meeting of one language with, with others. So this idea that um, there is kind of one stable, correct form of language and there are kind of other forms that, that kind of fail to make the grade is, is yeah, it's, it, that's difficult. But actually what interests me in, in this poem is, is something slightly different from around this kind of area. And we get a sense of it if we really start to think about that line, look we have coming to Dover. I mean, what does it mean? The first thing it could mean is look we have coming to Dover, exclamation mark. This is an exclamation, ex, exclamation. Um, from one person to another to say, look, we've arrived. Look, we've coming to Dover. Look, we have arrived in Dover. 
So the we here is, is, is a given group, a given group of immigrants, and the call out is from one to another saying, look, we have arrived in Dover. That could be one meaning. Another sense of it is more of a kind of a retrospective narration. Still about the immigrant experience, but basically saying, look we have coming to Dover. This is the look we had when we arrived in Dover. This is what we saw when we arrived in Dover. So is it an exclamation to another at that time to say we've arrived in Dover? Or is the look here actually what is being seen on arrival in Dover? Equally, look we have coming to Dover could be about the look that we have coming to Dover. In other words, the look of other people at us. Look we have coming to Dover could be about us being seen. The look that other people give us when we arrive in Dover. And already here, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a couple of things. The first is that the idea that this is a poem that has in it an easy separation <coughs> between recent immigrants and those that have been in, a, in, in, in the UK for a long time is difficult to sustain. That, that difference is definitely there. But also, right from the title, there is an uncertainty whether that this is a look which is a call out amongst friends or that this is a look which is an immigrant vision of Dover, or whether this is a look at the immigrants from people already in Dover. And that means that kind of, that easy separation of one group of people and another, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's hard to keep up in this poem. This, this poem is kind of messing around with those separations right from the start. And that in turn suggests something else to me, which is, you know, instead of seeing this as deficit English, English that's lacking something, English that's incorrect, we can instead see it as a kind of a perfection of English. Because what is poetry? If it isn't that form of expression that always says more than it seems to say. Isn't poetry in one sense always about a kind of a complexity of meaning, a kind of a doubling of meaning, a trebling of meaning in this case? When we read poetry, usually we get kind of excited when we find a line that, that can mean one thing and it can mean another. That's, that's showing the language is really kind of working. It's brilliant. So why can't we see this as high-level English rather than low-level English? And that gets me to think about something else, because there's another form of kind of English expression where something means other than what it means, or there's a kind of a doubling of meaning. And that's irony. And in the next video, I'm going to talk to you about irony in general, and the kind of the political problems irony introduces. In the third video, I'm going to read a bit of the poem uh, quite closely, and to draw out the implications of what, what I'm saying about irony and meaning. And lastly, I'm going to look in the final video about the um, subtitle, which is a quote from Matthew Arnold's Dover Beach, and, and talk a little bit about intertextuality.